Hello everyone. <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you over the years have seen people draw things and you think to yourself, my God, that person's really talented. And you think to yourself, I wish I could do that. I know that when I was a little kid, I was fascinated with drawing. My dad was very good. In fact, he was so good, he could draw with both his left and right hand. As a young boy, he was a lefty. And in Europe in those days, you were considered to be awkward or wrong if you use your left hand. So they used to tie his left hand behind him and force him to actually use his right. So after the war was over and he wound up going back to school and then eventually joining the service, he started to use his left hand. But by that time, he was well trained with both his right and left. And he was actually able to write his entire name first and last with both hands simultaneously moving from one side to the other till he wound up in the middle and you saw both his names written like that. Fascinating. So as a little boy, my dad would sketch, he would paint, he would draw. I'd be curious. And like any son, you'd say, oh gee, Pops, can I do that? And he'd start me off with a simple drawing. He'd say, why don't you try to copy me? And that's how I learned to draw. I learned to draw by copying. First simple drawings, then more difficult ones. Over the years, I became better and better. Eventually, I was actually as good as he was. The only difference, of course, is I'm only right-handed. When I was barely 10 years old, I was looking at a TV guide, which they used to print in the old days. Now they're all on the computer. But I saw a tiny little picture of a head that looked like a mask from Africa. All I had with me was a piece of notebook paper and a black crayon. So what I decided to do is I copied it. Now, if you look closely, keep in mind I was only 10 at the time. The problem here, the weak spot I noticed after I finished it and put it far away from me and looked at it for a while, I said, oh my gosh, the two eyes are too far apart. But other than that, I was pretty happy with the drawing. And this is just black crayon. Over the years, I sketched more and more, and I started to focus on portraits. Portraits were fun because they're the most difficult. And I had a loose style, which is similar to this, where basically you work it together in such a way that you don't draw detailed lines. You just use the side of the pencil and the point, and you can actually come up with a rough sketch that looks like a portrait. But, No matter how well you do at one, you always want to expand your parameters. So I decided I was going to try to do more detailed work. As in this case, this is also a pencil drawing. It's of Elizabeth Taylor. And in this particular case, I use shading with the pencil. This is completely of pencil. And what I did was I used my finger to rub the pencil to give a soft effect like a black and white photo and I use the eraser and eventually as you can probably see you get some pretty good details almost like a photo <clears throat> besides using pencil and crayon I also experimented with watercolors and ink this is from a postcard of Rotterdam the city I was born in. Again, I copied. In this case, I used watercolor by wetting the paper first and blotching ink, or not ink, actually watercolor. And you get a very soft sky. I did a little bit for the water below, and then I used the pen to put in some of the details, and I used a small brush with more paint and less water for some of the background. And this is the harbor. When you work in color, you have a lot more to work with, but there are more decisions to make. Plus color, you have different materials. So I showed you the pen, which is actually ink, as well as watercolor. This, on the other hand, is oil pastel. Oil pastel is like a very thick crayon that has an oily waxy feel. You can press down on it 
you can use turpentine with it and a brush. Or you can use it dry, which I did in this case. I used dry oil pastel on a very smooth poster board. Now that's not particularly clever because poster board is very smooth and slick. What you really want is a surface more like sketch paper that has somewhat of a rough feel to it. That way the oil pastel has more to stick to. But this turned out pretty well. It's from a history book. This is actually supposed to be the charge of San Juan Hill. Now besides using that, you can also use color in silk screens. In this particular case, on this silk screen, I actually used two colors, but it came out like three because I used a translucent paint over one of the stencils. And so I got three colors. And this actually is something I created from my mind. I didn't copy this. So I created these two horses with this background. I've always liked blues and greens and uh, turquoise, and that's why I chose these colors. It's very cool, refreshing, it looks exciting. I thought I'd add an artistic side to it where the front blues are actually outside the frame of the picture. And as an artist, you can do that. I also did another silk screen. In this particular case, these were separate colors. There are actually three colors here. Actually, I take that back four. And what happened in this particular case is I wanted the colors with a lot of negative space. So you notice that her face is the color of the background. It's white, but you can still see her nose and her chin and her forehead. And that was by using the other colors in a roundabout way to outline her face without actually drawing the lines themselves. I was experimenting. This again is something I made up out of my mind. I did not copy this. Now, sometimes you have to copy because you want to do a portrait. This is an oil pastel. I actually broke one of my own rules in doing this. You'll see it's a picture of the Duke. This is like from True Grit. And the, broke, the rule I broke was I used a great deal of black. Normally I avoid using black in any oil pastels because what happens is they get kind of a dirty look as almost happened here around the collar. But you see oil pastels have the same effect as oil paintings. Plus, believe it or not, if I took this off the frame, it wouldn't matter whether it's five years old, 20 or 30 the pastel is still going to feel a little bit wet. Sometimes you don't have much to work with. So I was looking through a movie magazine and I saw a picture of Marlena Dietrich. The picture of her face wasn't even as big as my pinky's fingernail. So I thought, well, let me see if I can actually visually make it larger by looking at the features, which I did in this particular case. This is 100% pencil drawing. I used the pencil, I rubbed where I wanted soft features. I also used the eraser to give the impression of hair. This might be a little bit easier to see. So this gives you kind of an idea as to what you can possibly do. And this was pretty much on my own by practicing. Carry a sketchbook with you, whatever catches your fancy, try to draw. In the lessons that you'll see on this particular channel, we'll take you step by step through making simple shapes first, shading them, eventually combining simple shapes so that you get more complicated drawings. To give you an idea, this is a simple black. It's got six sides. Normally you can see three, two, or one. If I hold it this way, you see only the front, which is a rectangle. If I hold it this way, you see the top and part of the front, the front compacted and the top. 
If I hold it at an angle, you see one, two, three sides. So when you draw things and you want a flat piece of paper to look three-dimensional, you have ways to do that. We call that one, two, or three-point perspective. You can do the same with something that is round. This is simply just a cinnamon shaker here, has cinnamon powder in here. Now if you look at it straight like this, it almost looks like a rectangle. If I hold it straight here, it's a circle. If I raise it like this, the circle flattens into an oval and you see part of the back. Now, in everyday life, you're going to see simple shapes. This is again like the bluff. It holds a CD or DVD. Let me hold my finger underneath there. So you see it has six sides and it's the same as the block, only it's a little flatter and wider. You go to the office depot, you get a hundred cards like this, and again, it looks like a block. Sometimes, not only do you have a circle, you also have a hole in it. If this were on a body of a car, it almost looked like a tire. But it's actually just some black electrical tape. If I hold it this way, what you see is a rectangle. If I hold it this way, you see an oval with space and another oval. If I hold it this way again, you see a rectangle. That's why when you see people drawing pictures of cars or trucks, anything with wheels on it, Sometimes the wheels look like they're rectangles, sometimes ovals, and sometimes circles. And all kinds of items come in these shapes. There is a battery. You know, basically, it's almost like a can of beer or Coca-Cola, but it's smaller and it's got a little cap on it. Even shoe cream comes in rounded units like this.